Role-playing games hold appeal to players for a million different reasons. From a mechanical standpoint, they're mentally stimulating, they hold appealing mathematical patterns of advancement, they're typically goal-oriented and feature profound growth over short periods, it's all stuff we're wired to enjoy. Game theory is full of those themes. There's a reason we react so well to them. But there's something else completely removed from the dice rolling and the pencil work that brings people back to the table week after week. It's the opportunity to be someone else for a little while. For however long your session lasts, you get to explore someone else's existence. Live as they do, see what they see, interact with things that don't exist in our world. Maybe you play a different aspect of yourself, or maybe you play someone completely random just to explore their thoughts a little. But whatever you do, you get to imagine, before, during, and after the game in ways that are far more profound than nearly any other form of social gaming. When I made Hicks and Draconis, I wanted to afford the greatest opportunity I could for players to leave themselves behind for a while and be in some place with familiar themes but whole new avenues of discovery and immersion. The goal was to give you a place to be what's in your head. The setting was crafted to fill in the blanks of your own mental narrative and give you hooks for any of the ideas you've held on to in daydreams for years. I wanted to give your characters a home. So, let's walk around the neighborhood. HSD's environment is local space, meaning it doesn't extend beyond the confines of our solar system, at least not by means of conventional travel. Try not to get drawn into the Lucasian one biome per planet interpretation here though. You have no shortage of variety available to you. Mars and Venus are both fully populated worlds and they are worlds with all the associated variety of flora and fauna. Its massive canyon systems have become an amazing super forest with lush life all along its walls and million credit homes hanging out over its expanses. Olympus Mons is a spaceport that serves the entire system and hosts the largest atmosphere capable craft in existence. Below its surface, caustic chemicals and runoff from Mars's terraforming have collected in ancient tunnels and mixed with the proteins used during its regrowth to form bizarre and deadly plant and animal life, and the searing acids from the same procedure have carved and widened the tunnels ever more, providing enormous underground environments fraught with danger. Venus adopted almost none of the original earthly wildlife and generated a whole new species to populate its landscape. By following a few genetic guidelines, it's possible to integrate new creatures into the Venusian food chain without disruption, resulting in the most varied degree of imaginative fun on the system. Not all of them survive, and the strongest have become legendary super predators that skulk through the brittle, lattice-like shorelines of the Venusian coast. Ganymede is a cold and harsh home shrouded in perpetual twilight where the locals bridge the gap between frontier justice and high-tech civilization. And Europa is a pristine gem that hides the only physical piece of extraterrestrial evidence in the known universe. Emphasis on known. Earth is populated by creatures best left to nightmares. It had other occupants once, but no one has seen the things called human in the better half of a thousand years. So, where do you fit? When I set about putting together the HSD environment, I had a few ideas in mind. The big one was layers. I wanted an environment people could continue to live in even if they weren't actually playing the game right at that moment. They could roleplay with friends at set of game sessions, have some idea of what was going on between meetings, and put together a headcanon for what their character was doing even when they weren't getting shot at. As a result, the day-to-day -day life of a character in the setting is more or less normal. They wake up, perhaps in their city apartment, perhaps someplace out in the more open areas of the world, maybe in one of the ultra-high cloud blocks of Mars' skyscrapers, and go about their day. Some have day jobs they commute to, some work in offices in-house. Player characters are usually on retainer, so they tend to be doing odd jobs until their corp calls on them. Private investigation, computer encryption, the work varies based on the skill set. Suffice it to say, if you wish to be normal, you can be normal. The world isn't constantly blowing up around you. On the surface, anyway. But below any element of this environment is the opportunity to find that secret war that makes a lot of sci-fi so interesting. A purchase ends up running you more credits than normal, so you look into it. A few investigation checks later and you discover that it isn't just you, but everyone being overcharged. And they're not funneling to the corp who owns the store, but to someone else entirely. So you sell the info to the corp, and they hire you to track down the culprit. You trace the funds to a rival corporation, but when you report the findings, the folks that hire you seem dodgy. They pay you, dismiss you, and don't press charges against the person stealing from them. Why is that? Maybe you leave well enough alone. Maybe you go deeper, and find out that the Thieving Corp is actually a front for a secret R&D division of the original, who was siphoning funds in order to avoid having to report the cost to investors. What are they doing that requires so much secrecy? You sleep on it, and halfway through the night you're fighting off assassins who slip through your window on the 500th floor with a knife and a machine that muffles noises. Apparently.
they were serious about that secret stuff. There are any number of different hooks to lead players down the different pathways in HSD lore. That was a quick shot at a little corporate espionage, but you could just as easily stumble across an escaped experiment, or volunteer to be one, or even engage in some of the more supernatural and eerie aspects of the game. The idea is to provide a funnel that blooms outward into ever larger implications the deeper you dig, with ever increasing risk, until your character can feel the pressure of what they've learned weighing down on them like an ocean, and your perception of that normal world around you changes forever.